Hi, this is DJ Chuang, and today I am with Peter Park. He's started a website called Redemption Boulevard, and one of the most prolific places that blogs about multicultural worship. I'm glad you could join me today to talk about how Redemption Boulevard came about and what's he what's he's doing and how he's getting his insights. So, Peter, uh, tell us about yourself and Redemption Boulevard. Yeah, um, I've been um, leading uh, worship since I was 16, uh, so it's been 14 years now, okay. and um, been uh, involved with multicultural worship for uh, almost six years now, um, and um, really just um, started um, catching the vision about it when we, uh, when my wife and I uh, needed to uh, look for a church for the first time and uh, found a church that just felt like home and um, started leading worship there and, and um, had a conversation with our pastor about um, what they were intending to do um, with uh, their music and, and um, being open to that, yeah. Well, let's flesh it out a little bit more. So. Uh just six years ago, you really caught, uh, expanded your vision for multicultural worship. Uh, mm -hmm. but you led worship for another um, eight years before that. So what kind of context was your worship leading before that? Yeah. Um, um, I primarily did music that um, you hear on the radio, um, you know, uh, contemporary Christian music, lots of uh, Chris Tomlin, um, listen to uh, DC Talk, um, all those guys who you frequently still now uh, listen to uh, on the radio and um, didn't even touch uh, the hymns or, or anything like that um, just because um, I didn't know them at all. Um, our church growing up um, experienced two church splits. Um, and so we had leadership, then they're gone, and um, and so we were never taught any of the hymns or any of the real um, traditions until um, until later, uh, much later. So, um, yeah. And so, what does multicultural worship look and sound like, and why is it so important? Yeah, multicultural worship is um, way uh, different than um, um, what I had been doing before. Um, preparation looks different. Um, I don't um, get to sit in a room by myself and just pick songs anymore. <laughs> uh, multicultural worship means, um, um, even as an introvert, it means uh, I need to... Um, you know, reach out to people that I normally might not talk to. I need to um, uh, spend some time with my Hispanic brother. Um, spend time with people who um, are um, uh, from Africa that um, speak French, but it's not the same French as the one that's uh, from France. And so we need to work out some of those things and develop relationships and uh, spend time in the word um, and, um, it's pretty clear, uh, from the scriptures that, um, this is part of, uh, God's heart. And so, um, we definitely, uh, want to, um, be in obedience of what, where God's heart is. Um, yeah. So what, how does it sound different? It sounds like you've got a diverse team and you're building relationships mm -hmm. in your worship team that's yeah. diverse. How does it manifest itself in terms of sound? As far as sound, um, for me, um, it um, you can describe it more as a, a fusion um, because you're t for me, I'm taking songs that people probably already know and um, adding languages to it, adding um, 
different um, instruments to it to make it sound different. Um, you know, it could be violin or piano or um, uh, some unusual uh, instrument to um, give it a different flavor um, so that everyone can contribute uh, to the sound um, and um, that way they could, their culture and their um, sound can be um, um, honored and uh, they can bless us in that. Yeah. So we've talked about the musical side of sound. How about the lyrics side of things? The lyrics, as far as what, what, what? Um, are, are you writing new songs that mean? would reflect more of a multicultural worship? Oh yeah, um, yeah, definitely. Um, as I network with more people, um, and. Um, um, get in the category of what we call global music. Um, definitely finding um, music in, in um, from that culture um, that um, um, is worship um, of God. And um, I'm pretty selective when it comes to uh, what we call global music. Um, it needs to um, make sense um, theologically and uh, musically uh, for uh, the church and congregation. Because um, we certainly don't want to put in a global song just because it's a Christian, quote, quote Christian song. Um, it needs to um, kind of go through a filter and uh, definitely uh, want to check with your pastor if you're not sure about <laughs> the context of a song. Uh, but. Um, yeah, um, there are songs out there, um, and they're uh, certainly not easy to find, uh, but that's why it's important to um, network with people and talk with people. So what's, help, what's helped you in this journey of developing multicultural work? Because it's rather underdeveloped. Um, I would say... Um, the thing that has helped the most is uh, two things. Um, one, understanding biblically uh, why it's important. Um, you know, we take a, a, a familiar passage like um, Psalm 46, 10, um, which says, Be still and know that I am God. And that's a passage that we um, know um, just the first half of it, you know, the rest of it says, I will be exalted among the nations, I'll be exalted in the earth. And um, there are a lot of passages like that in scripture where God's calling um, all the nations to um, praise him. And, um, you know, I heard a, a pastor recently talk about um, uh, the Great Commission and um, and how Christ sent out the disciples and and then um, we have, um, at the other side of it, Revelation, where uh, people from every tribe, nation, and tongue are standing before God and praising Him. And so um, between that uh, Great Commission and, and, and Revelation, we uh, have a lot of work to do, and um, uh, that's an exciting place to be. Um, and uh, the second part of it that's been real helpful is just to network um, a lot with people that um, you know, you normally don't, uh, which means you need to get out of your comfort zone. It means you need to uh, really depend on God and have faith uh, that he's going to develop those relationships with people that, um, you know, even if it means, um, um, you know, learning their language or um, just learning a few phrases to start the conversation um, and uh, get to know someone's heart and you know believers from uh, different cultures um, it's a hard road uh, for sure developing the relationships but they're essential if 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 the multicultural worship is to be um, authentic um, so uh, definitely important so it sounds like you're developing relationships within your local church context and uh, outside of your church as well yep it's it's 
it's got to be all over. Um, and um, definitely needs to be intentional. Um, so. Now, uh, for people that are watching this video and they're curious and would like to get more involved in learning and developing multicultural worship, where can they find some of those network people and resources? Yeah. Um, yeah, if they go to my website, uh, redemptionboulevard.com, um, there's some different social networks uh, that you can um, get involved with and, um, you know, at the very least, my email and phone number is out there um, on the website as well. Uh, they can contact me and I'll um, uh, start introductions and, and find out about them and see what, what they need. Um, and I'm uh, willing to uh, make the connection there for them. Are there networks that you're willing to divulge right now? Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, one of the ministries that I work with a lot is Proscaneo uh, Ministries, and their website's www.proscaneo.info. Okay. Um, I'll link to it in the show notes. And um, another uh, website is... Um, <laughs> We'll include it's, uh, in the interview. It's all right. It's a uh, part of the city uh, ministries, um, and um, it's part of the city dot org. Um, and I have a good good friend there that's been doing multicultural worship for forever. <laughs> all right. Uh, so yeah. Good. I hope those sites would have some uh, sample songs that we can learn and yeah, be inspired definitely. by. Now, uh, yeah, what yeah. is your ethnic background? You look a bit Asian American. <laughs> um, my parents are Korean, um, and so um, yeah, my parents came over in the seventies, um, and then I was born here. Yeah. Well, one of the conversations that I hear um, quite often is, uh, "What does Asian American worship sound like, and what is their con mm -hmm. unique contribution to?" this multicultural worship? Yeah, um, I think, uh, um, you know, I recently had uh, the opportunity to visit my uh, parents' church and uh, visit their service. And um, it, um, you know, obviously they sang uh, songs in, in Korean, but um, you know, they sang the hymns, they sang um, some of these uh, modern uh, contemporary songs, but they were translated into Korean and, um, you know, really there isn't really a huge difference between, you know, what I see as, um, you know, sometimes what they call English ministry and, um, you know, the dull Korean service. Um, I think uh, the, the main difference there might be... Uh, um, you know, the Korean language, and so, um, you know, these two groups of people definitely need to get together and worship together. Uh, um, but um, yeah, and it, from my perspective, it doesn't uh, musically. It, it's not too different um, from um, what a lot of churches, uh, American churches, are doing with uh, hymns and contemporary songs. Um, main difference might be language at this point but um, but some of the conversation that we have with cultural worship is um, hard music and um, some of that might include um, introducing traditional instruments uh, of uh, um, let's say Korean music um, with draw with certain drums and things like that and and doing it well um, and so uh, there's no one right way to do it, um, but again, you need to go, go back to the relationships and ask people, um, um, you know, what they feel is, um, in one sense, relevant to them, but it's, the point is not to please people either, <laughs> so. Um, well, very yeah. good. I'm glad you're uh, one of the voices out there really paving the way and uh, helping us to flesh this out in a global conversation. So thank you for being able for this conversation. Yeah, I'm happy to be. Yeah, yeah and, and I know uh, 
others are exploring beyond just the sound and instruments and exploring what it what it means to tell our story and how God's made a difference and that can look different for first generation Asian versus a second generation English speaking Asian American multiracial kids and a yeah. diverse community so there's a there's a lot to explore in terms of uh, uh, the creativity God's endowed us with and our worship can uh, bring glory to him yeah yeah. Any last Definitely. words? Um, would, you, would your son like to say something? <laughs> I guess not. Okay. <laughs> um, I would say, um, you know, pray for endurance as you, as as you go through the journey for multicultural worship. It's um, it's not um, a lot of things will become a lot harder, uh, but definitely worth it. Um, as we respond to God's call um, to bring the uh, to reflect the gospel and and worship together as brothers and sisters from different nations, yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much, Peter. Enjoyed talking with you. Yeah, you too.